Hello, uh, today we're going to be talking about the four-point bending beam test and basically this is the equipment. It's a pneumatic equipment so as you can see we need air and basically what it does is it's going to apply a load into a rectangular specimen like this. Basically the dimensions that are required on the specification are two and a half inches by two inches by 15 and a half inches long and well the first step, the first thing we need to do is produce a sample like this. This, uh, as you can guess, we cannot produce on a super paved gyratory compactor. So we need to use something like a vibratory compactor or, or a kneading compactor. And then uh, with one of those, we usually produce like a big slab of asphalt mix. And then we get that slab and we cut it in another lab and then we produce specimens like this. So uh, the first thing uh, that I can mention is the test basically, as I mentioned, applies a load from the bottom and it's going to have a resistance on four points at the top. So basically what you are causing is a, a, a uniform moment in the middle a third a, of the sample. So what, what this does is that you ensure that uh, since the maximum moment is going to be there, you ensure that uh, the crack or the beam is going to fail along that middle third of your specimen. And that, on that, along that middle third is where you measure, where, where you have an LVDT that you are going to use to measure uh, deformations, which is right there. So the first thing we need to do is we place our sample in the equipment. And we need to make sure that it's resting on, on the four supports correctly. So we ensure that by playing a little bit with the jog so that it's laying uh, correctly. So once it's kind of evenly sitting, the first thing we do is uh, we lock the specimen in place and then we lower first the outer supports and then the inner supports. And now later on, we're going to make sure that the LVDT is uh, correctly placed. So the next thing we go is we open the software, the fatigue test software. So we just start a new test. The, the first um, page of the software just requires you to put what is the, who's operating and some additional comments if you want to identify this specimen later. The same on, on the second tab. And basically, uh, we just enter some information that we want to use to identify the sample, plus uh, the geometrical information of your specimen that you, you're supposed to have measured previously. In this case, I have already entered uh, right here. And if you have several measurements, you can enter several, and the machine is going to average it out uh, by itself. So on the third tab is where we enter uh, that type of load that we're going to apply. Usually, uh, the specification talks about the Haversine uh, strain control test, but we can also apply a stress control test and using sinusoidal waves. So normally, we select a frequency of 10 hertz. Th that is how it's uh, on the specification, but uh, the software allows us to change this. For example, we can go uh, at the higher frequency or at the lower frequency but uh, 10 is how we usually run it. Then uh, we're using a strain control test so uh, we need to specify what is the peak uh, strain that is going to be applied on each cycle of the test. So right now we're going to run 450 microstrains so maybe let's run it a little higher, 600 microstrains. And then, as you can see, this line is, um, says conditioning cycles. What it does is it's going to uh, start applying these deformations. And at the 50th cycle, it's going to measure the stiffness. Because the test, is, is, since it's a strain control test, the beam is not going to break. So we need to define a failure in some way. So basically, the specification defines failure as the when you reach 50% of the initial stiffness of the specimen. So, and, and that initial stiffness is measured on the 50th cycle so that uh, the noise goes a little bit down on the, on the first measurements. 
Uh, then we press on this levels uh, button. And then here, what basically what we need to do is make sure that the LVDT is kind of centered so it has room to, uh, to change once that we start applying the formations on the beam. So, just try to center it as much as possible. And then we are set. The other indications are temperature and the actual force, but that is uh, centered and that's going to be controlled automatically. So once this is uh, done, we're ready to start the test. So we just uh, click here on start. It's going to ask us for a name for our file. So we just type in a name, press save, and remove here the And basically now the test has started. Yeah, as you can see, it measures the stiffness in the initial 50 cycles. And it records that the 50% of that initial stiffness here, so that's the termination criteria. So once uh, the, the stiffness of the mix reaches this, the test is going to stop. And that's what we're going to call however many cycles it takes to reach this stiffness is what we're going to call like the, the fatigue indicator for this test. So as you can see, the more uh, strain we apply, the stiffness starts going down. This is a strain control test. And this is going to go on until we reach this uh, termination stiffness. OK, so. Uh, you can see the test has continued to run. It's been approximately under two hours since we started the test, and the machine has already applied uh, under 65,000 cycles. Uh, as you can notice, there's usually the, the stiffness that was measured in the beginning, 6,500, 6, that remained there. And during the first cycle, usually the, the stiffness tends to drop quickly and then it tends to stabilize a little bit but what you can notice is that the stiffness has continued to drop down and this is just an indicator of how, how the mix has started to fail so and it should continue this way until we reach the termination stiffness that we specified in the beginning of the test and in this case uh, in the beginning of the test we mentioned that for the spec it's 50 percent but later on we change it to go way below so that we can try and observe a crack in the specimen when it actually fails. Okay, so as we mentioned previously, we're running the test based on a control strain. So as you can imagine, since it's a control strain test, basically uh, the machine is going to continue applying the same deformation during every cycle. And therefore, since the material is getting softer and softer, then uh, the deformations, but the deformation that we're applying keeps the same. So uh, to achieve a crack or for a crack to appear, it might tend to be a little harder. However, if we do a stress control test, on the other hand, then we're going to apply the same stress during every cycle of the test. So, and in this case, uh, the material is going to re start the uh, weakening, getting softer, but the stress is going to be the same. So there's going to be a point where a crack is going to develop. And this is the case of this beam that we tested under stress control condition. And actually here you can see how a crack developed starting at the bottom all the way through the top.